Hi guys, my name's Harry and I'm a designer slash industrial design student and um, I've had a bit of a break from YouTube but I thought what better way to come back than to do Gravity Sketches challenge to make a tutorial for their new software Gravity Sketch for iPad. I've been using this software for about a month now, having a bit of fun with it. So today, not only am I going to do a bit of a tutorial, show you guys how to sketch in it and a few of the basic features, but I'm also going to talk a bit about where it can be best used in your existing design process and where it can be used to elevate and complement some of those more traditional means of designing. So let's hop into the iPad and talk a little bit about where you could probably best use it efficiently. So to get started with talking about where Gravity Sketch for iPad best fits in the design process, we're going to take a look at this here, which any design student or most designers will probably be aware of. This is the double diamond approach, which is a fairly accepted way to illustrate the typical design process. And I'm going to use this to give my opinion as to where Gravity Sketch for iPad could be best used in the design process. Taking a look at this side here, this is more your research phase where you're diverging through sort of primary and secondary research and then converging on areas for opportunities that you can explore when, when designing the product or through early ideation. To be honest, there's not really much use for the software here as, as you could probably imagine because it is a sketching tool. Um, so yes, we're gonna move straight on to more of the ideation and implementation phase. So, and as we move on to the next phase here, this is your initial ideation phase. And I'd still leave this phase to the trusty old pen and paper, because this is where you still need to be most efficient. You wanna get as many ideas down on the page as efficiently and descriptively as you possibly can to leave no idea behind. I made a bit of video on this on how you can improve your sketching confidence during this phase. So go check that out if you haven't already. But moving on, we have this next section here, which is a bit of an early evaluation of those initial concepts. And this is where I think Gravity Sketch for iPad definitely has a place for learning some of those early ideas in a little bit of 3D and sort of evaluate some of those form lines just before you move on to your phone models and your initial CAD models and things like that. This can be a great way to sort of start to visualize it in a a slightly more 3d sense that's still still very efficient and still quite scribbly and, and you know sketchy so i certainly think that gravity sketch for ipad has a place sort of around here and this could definitely sort of expand into this section with with doing rapid iterations around early cab models or sketching modifications in 3d over this sort of thing and i mean definitely in a covid world where it might be a bit harder to get into workshops so early on something like this great way to start to visualize those concepts in 3D early on and evaluate some of those early form lines. And what do I mean by form lines? Well, anyone who's a design student will probably recognize this kind of page where you're evaluating uh, existing forms. And, and I don't know, in a way, it's sort of like doing that with your own designs and breaking up some of those really key lines, but evaluating them in 3D rather than the 2D, which, which I guess can be really useful. Um, a bit like this task here, which, as I said, if, if anyone who's been to university or is at uni will probably be quite um, familiar with this, with this quite useful task as well. So now we've established where Gravity Sketch for iPad could be used in the process, let's put it into practice and um, take some sketches that look like they're sort of from the initial phase of a design project and let's explore those lines in 3D using Gravity Sketch for iPad. So these are some very rough sketches that are sort of just to convey an idea that I've whipped up and is sort of representative of the sort of rough sketchy stuff you might get right at the start of a design project. And um, yeah, let's say I want to evaluate some of these lines now in 3D as quickly as I can and get an idea for say, what this line here is like, where it's sort of this curved body shape, what the dial might look like and sort of the proportions of these and this sort of dial here, because I kind of want it to come in like that where the face sits and um, yeah I think Gravity Sketch could definitely be used here to have a look at that. So let's go into Gravity Sketch. So I'm going to load up a new file in Gravity Sketch and I'm going to make sure that the environment and the grid is on. Also going to turn that down slightly 
And yeah, so you can use your finger to sort of navigate and we're gonna start on the top plane. So if we use this cube here in the bottom, you can use that to spin it or you can just use one finger. And you can use this cube here to select your view. So we're just gonna to go to top view and then use this button here to turn that there. Now you can see that we can sketch on this plane and that's where it is. So what we're gonna do first of all is have a look at drawing the sort of top of the, the watch dial. So we're gonna go into our tools here and go for a revolve. What this means is it means we can make a really nice perfect circle without having to worry too much about it. And there we go. So you can see there how we've just put down a line on the, on the sort of bottom plane there. So we've made this, so we've made this top surface here and now we wanna make this bottom surface here. So what we're gonna do now is go to the side and we're gonna use this scroller here and this is how you control the depth of the plane. So we're gonna move it to around here because that's probably about as thick as I want it to be. Now you can see that the plane is underneath. We can go back to the top view and we can do another revolve just there. Now you can see we've got two. Again, now we wanna to start to create this profile here. So we're gonna make a line here. So we're gonna go into our side view again. Think about where that plane could be so it sits just about in the middle. Yeah, I think that's about right. And what we're actually gonna do now is go back to the top and do another and revolve this ever so slightly further out. You can start to see that we're starting to construct that sort of curved body of the watch there. So now we're gonna use the mirror tool to put in some contour lines. So you can press your mirror there, and we can see that it's put the mirror plane there. Anything that we do on this side gets mirrored on that axis. So what we can do now is we wanna put in some contour lines to show the curved side. So we go here, and then we use this tool here to bring the plane to the front, just like that. So now you can see that the plane cuts where we wanna put those contour lines. Go back to the front view, so slightly offset it, and draw those in, nice and simple. Now you can see there that I've sort of gone ever so slightly over and that's completely fine because what we can do is go to the select tool, select the line, press these buttons here and now we get the option to adjust that spline. We can use this button here to either do it so we can do it in any direction whatsoever but we don't want that. So we use this one so that it's constrained purely in this plane and what we can do now is just make sure that it matches up. There we go. As simplified as possible. And now you can really start to see the body of this watch and some of these key contour lines come into life in a pretty efficient way. And this is exactly what I think you'd use this Gravity Sketch software for. So continuing, now we've got the body, let's start on adding some simple details to the dial. So what I'm gonna do is go up to my top view and use this tool to bring the plane to that view. Now what we wanna do is go back to our sketch here. And what I wanna do is start to bring in this drop here, this face here, which is where the watch face would sit. So I'm gonna to go to the side view here. Yeah. And I know that I want to bring it just under, maybe halfway there. Go back to the top view. Go back to our revolve tool. And turn off the mirror. And then put in the line there. So now you can see that we've got this sort of drops down edge there. We can pop our mirror back on because what we might want to do now 
just add some contour lines once more just to show that there's sort of a, a chamfer going on here this sort of continuous surface around the watch face so we're going to go to this view here we can use this tool to pop our surface back here we're going to double check that that's where it's crossing and you can see right there that's where we want to put our contour line and then we can pop that line in there beautiful so let's just have a look at what we've got so far well we've got this object so far where you can clearly see that it's sort of a rounded watch you can see the drop down onto the watch face there which is great now we can add a few more details to it before we're done but it's looking really good so let's add some slight details to the watch face so let's bring back up the grid because that's good so then if we look at the watch face we've designed we've got we've got two big dials and a little what we need to do is make sure that our plane is where we want it to be and it is go back to the top view get your revolve turn off the mirror back to your revolve tool on your mirror use a slightly bigger one pop those there now you can see that we've got some detail on that which is cool and then what we could do is move the plane up slightly Back to that top view, turn off your mirror, go back into stroke, let's go into the line here, make it slightly bigger, so we've sort of got a little watch face there, and then maybe we can look to add uh, some of the dials quickly so let's go to our side view move the plane over and then use this tool to direct where we want the plane to be so around here right here Revolve tool. And then maybe we want to add a little chamfer, so we'll go in and do a revolve that's slightly bigger. There. We've got something like that, which is pretty cool. And we move the plane just back to the middle, and then now we might want to add some of these bits here, the sort of bits where the straps go. So we can do that by adding our mirror plane back. So now, if we go back to our normal tool, go back to the front view, you can see we can add sort of sections like this to determine where those go. Adding something like that, do something similar on the other side. Like that. And then we might want to angle this slightly. So we 
can go away slightly by using this tool. And they look like that. And we've got a pretty good idea of how this watch is going to shape up. If you press the copy button here, you can then move it down like so. Maybe all of a sudden you've got something a bit thickened. Do that the same on this side. Copy it, move it down about the same amount. A bit more. Move to our front view. Copy it. Down. Then we've got something that's looking like this. You see a watch starting to form there. We might want to just add some more contour lines that might help us start to describe this form. Let's just pop that back in the middle. There. Darken mirror. just keep adding contours like this freely if we want as much detail as you like and we might want to start thinking about adding some sort of domed top to this as well some nice glass nice glass detail like this which just finishes it off quite nicely and then I might do the opposite cross section as well just to sort of define it even more when we spin it around and we can really start to see that um, coming together now, which is great. And then finally, if we're going to do the strap, you've got to make sure that you have your mirror in the center, and then if you center your center plane as well, so that you're drawing right in the middle. We're having the mirror turned on, so you create two copies of the same line, which means you can then spread them out, and it becomes um, the two edges of the watch strap in just one go. Um, so we're going to take this now and select um, the line here and then yeah as I said because we made copies of them you can just move them apart and there you go and that is it that is it all finished um, by all means if you want to carry on and add as many details as you can then that's fantastic but um, this is the sort of fidelity that I think you could probably get to in quite an efficient time like this and it, I mean it's effective enough to describe the form which is important as well and uh, it just shows that this software can be really useful so yeah that's it hopefully um, you enjoyed this video and hopefully you got to see where you could have a go with this gravity sketch firepad software I've had lots of fun with it and think it's great and hopefully we'll be using it in the future and keeping on applying it in uh, more real scenarios. Yeah, definitely go check out this software and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, hopefully I should be doing some more videos now. Uh, I've had some really lovely comments and suggestions um, on previous videos and um, we'll definitely be doing more. So thank you, bye.